Hello for Tuesday's World Economic News and I'm going to continue on about the United States but fire off a Liam Halligan article in the UK Telegraph where he starts the article with strengthening jobs data last week shows the US has reached a turning point. On Wall Street the Dow Jones share index just hit its highest level since June 2008. As America cranks up, forecasts for higher energy use in the West are boosting oil prices. Brent crude extended gains to over $119 a barrel on Friday, which is a 32-month high. In London, the FTSE 100 joined the party, closing above 6,000 points for the first time since early March. Equity markets are interpreting a slew of recent U.S. data as evidence. The global economy is on the road to a full recovery. Private employers hired 230,000 people in the states last month, building on the 240,000 new jobs created the month before. Forget America's jobless recovery, unemployment is now at a two-year low of 8.8%, down from 8.9% in February and 10.2% in early 2010. Now, in a way, he's just pretending that he's believing that this is really a turning point and everything is on the mend and on the up and up. And if you read the article, you'll get his drift on this. But this information can be written about most of the Western nations. If you read the right sort of data, you can imagine that everything is okay. I'm going to push in a bit of information here that might um, bring that into question. We'll go for a historical graph first. Um, Fed. Uh, Fed funds rate from 1955 to 2011 and you can see it's from 55 to um, early 1980s it was uppity up up and from the early 80s to now it's on the down 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 um, quite clearly trending up and then trending down again. Next we go to the Fed funds target rate same rate uh, just more up to date from 2001 it was too low in the beginning, uh, 2003 and 4, Greenspan um, letting the bubbles um, grow. Uh, they tried to bring it down by putting it up to 5.5%, but we can see that since 2009, it's just been slammed on the floor and it's crawling along the floor. And that's the most accommodative the Fed has ever been and obviously has never done anything like it for such an extended period. And if we we can see this in this chart, uh, what, 2007 in April, where we are now, four years ago, the Fed funds target rate was 5.25. Four years ago, it was 2.25. But you can see for all of 2009, all of 2010, and where we are up to now in 2011, it's between 0 and 0.25, a quarter of a percent really on the floor but we haven't got much bang for that low percentage buck next we have the u.s federal government budget deficit 108 year graph going back to 1900 and you can see it was basically at zero for an awful long time but since the 80s it's gone wilder it's gone further from zero obviously because the numbers get bigger but we can see that even back in 2006 it was within the norms it was up at minus 250 billion in other words the deficit was 250 billion it had visited down towards 400 billion around uh, 9-11 time but you can see what's happened since the recession it's come down to almost 1,500 billion which is one and a half trillion it's it's a trillion over trend it's a tr- they're spending a trillion more in the United States than would be anywhere considered normal and how much bang is being got for that huge quantity of buck That is a bundle of bucks a trillion over in deficits. And this is just the more up-to-date chart where it shows it dropping down from uh, 
250 minus, which is the deficit, down to 1500 and about 1250 now, confirming it's a, tw it's a trillion dollars a year being spent into the economy by the government that wasn't being spent before. It's an awful lot. And there are the figures. 10% um, of GDP deficit in 2009, 9% in 2010, and I believe it's going to be about 9% in 2011. I've made, marked in yellow that um, early 1980s, the only comparable sort of time where uh, deficits were around 5% of uh, GDP for a um, for five-year period, four-year period. This is the USDX, the dollar chart, going back to 1980, about 83, 82, something like that. The dollar went strong early in those 80s times. And then, um, towards the end of the 80s, it had gone weak again. It ran along the bottom. It had an up to 2002, where it was relatively strong, at 120 US dollar index number it's against a basket of currencies and we can see from 2002 the trend is definitely downwards but obviously lately everything's been up and down so the usdx has been up and down and the latest trend is down again but there's no reason really to believe it should go on down uh, to bottom right off that chart it could well trend along who knows what it's going to do because it's against a basket of other con currencies and all other currencies are wanting to devalue themselves so they can export more. And this is the more uh, up-to-date USDX chart from 2002. And you can see that trend down to 2008. And it's had uh, two episodes of up and down since then. And we're at the bottom of the latest down. So people want to drop their currency so they can export I've dragged out this business news, Electrolux closed Iowa plants. Webster City, Iowa, Electrolux will move production of its products out of the United States, eliminating 850 jobs, the company officials confirm. All North American washer and dryer manufacturing will go to Mexico. Um, the dollar wouldn't have a chance against that sort of competition. Here we have the price of oil going back to 06, and you can see it um, jogged along until the recession really hit just after now, four years ago, or mid summer of 2007, four years ago it was now. And then the price of oil ramped up when it was clear that a recession caused by or, or around the subprime problems was upon us four years ago. But then up to three years ago, the summer of 2008, the price of oil had ramped up. So it's no confirmation that your economy is doing dreadfully, awfully well if the price of oil is going up. Um, it's just not. And then when the recession was totally confirmed, the price of oil crashes. And we can see from early two th 2009 onwards, it has gently but consistently gone up and up and up for various reasons. And we'll end on the last paragraph of the Liam Halligan article in the Telegraph that I referenced first, where he finishes with, So beware of the siren voices claiming that shares, equities, on Wall Street will keep rising. Beware of anyone who is so deluded that they point to the surging oil prices as evidence that the US, the world's biggest oil importer by far, of course, is fit and healthy and ready to rock. Yet that was the cry among many Wall Street denizens last week. Oil is rising. We are saved. He says he paraphrases, but not a lot. Anybody that says oil is rising, so we are saved, when they're talking about a Western world economy, is a deluded idiot. But apparently there was a lot of deluded idiocy going on while I was not here last week. We will not have any more of it. See you tomorrow. Bye.